So the inevitable has happened. You fell out of love with your closet, nothing seems to be working, you feel like you have nothing to wear. The honeymoon is over. I could be listing endless reasons why you feel less than happy with your closet. It could be that you have too many clothes and they don't mix and match. Or you don't have enough options. It could be that your style evolved or you have difficulty with seasonal dressing. I don't want that for you. I want you to feel excited and I want you to feel great. And I want you to get the most out of your closet so you can take the best version of yourself into your day. If that's happening to you, fear not, because there are ways to fix that and have you make up with your closet once and for all. And going from being dissatisfied with your closet and frustrated in getting dressed to being re-inspired and all in love with your closet once again. So my tip number one is find different ways of styling your existing pieces. We often get stuck in ways in styling our pieces the same way over and over and over again. And of course that can be frustrating, that can be boring, that can become too monotonous. I lost count of how many times my clients say, how come haven't I thought of styling this like this before? Or I didn't realize this piece would go with this. So that goes to show that sometimes it's just in front of us, we just need some inspiration of some sort. It could be styling colors, textures or silhouettes in ways you haven't done before. Color has a lot to do with how fresh our outfit and our wardrobe can feel to us. Even if you are a neutral person, consider a pop of color in some sort. It could be an accessory or a jewelry, the size you want. Just consider adding that extra third color to your outfit composition. All of a sudden, an injection of color just completely transforms the outfit and bring new life to it. For example, try mix a print that you have in your closet and that you only style with solid colors with another print. You may be surprised with how they actually work together. And voila, you have a brand new outfit from existing pieces. When it comes to your accessories, keep them neutral. That's the safest way. But I like the idea of emulating one of the colors of the outfit in your accessories as well. Or alternatively, try colors that you wouldn't think of pairing together. For example, unusual color combos like green and blue or yellow and pink. Well, choose the colors that feel right for you. It's completely personal. I'm particularly very fond of mixing bright colors together, like primary colors or other bright colors. Keep the tailoring very sartorial, very well cut and basic pieces. Keep it simple in terms of the cut and the fabrics. Or you can mix lighter colors with brighter colors. There's no rules around that. If you want to know about other color combinations, I've made a video on that. You can check that out. The next tip is getting inspired on social media. I know that I said a lot, don't copy someone else's style. What I'm suggesting here, instead of you aimlessly scrolling these apps, do that strategically. Find someone that you have a similar piece or style and see how they style it. It will give you clues on how you style your pieces. It's not that I'm suggesting you to copy them or go get what they're wearing, but just getting the inspiration, catch their brains in how they style a piece in a way that you wouldn't have thought of otherwise. That way you are stealing the styling and not the outfit itself. There is a difference. So go back to the previous tip and get experimenting with your closet. So the next tip is organize and rearrange your closet. Again, that's nothing new here. We have to have an organized closet so we can see everything we have. Well, without that, there's nothing we can do. You, you, you get stuck. You won't see what you have. You get frustrated. That should be out of the way already. But what I'm suggesting here is for you to rearrange the way you normally organize your closet. We often pick the first underwear of the pile just for convenience. Instead of putting the fresh ones 
under the pile so we get them in rotation all the time. So the same happens with their closet. We open our closet and we grab the first thing we see and if you rearrange that, put the things that are at the front, at the back, or rearrange them by style and by color, whatever feels right to you. There's no rule, actually. It's just something that works for you, for your personality, how you interact with your closet. It's been proven that uniformity brings out creativity and lessens the stress of getting dressed. Sometimes simple things make all the difference and give a wardrobe a new life it needs. So the next thing is don't save the best for special occasions. Sometimes we limited how we wear our clothes. We think that casuals are just for running errands and you know more dressy or more statement pieces are just for special occasions. But the thing is, if you don't wear your clothes, you don't wear your clothes. And clothes are made to be worn. So find ways to wear your statement pieces in new and different ways. One of my favorite ways to style a t-shirt at the moment is pair it with some formal wear. Pair with those elevated pieces you only wore once since you bought it years ago. Just wear them. This is something that my mom used to do. She would save the best pieces for special occasions. I made a post the other day on how to wear whites and white is one of my favorite colors throughout the year. And people, lots of people commented that they don't like to wear white because they feel that it's gonna get wrecked, it's gonna get dirty. There are ways for you to prep the fabric so in case something happens, and it can happen, life happens, there are ways to protect the fabric from getting stained. So if it gets stains, it comes off easy. You know, you don't need to limit yourself, limit colors. You like a color, but you don't wear it because of something like that uh, or because you don't want to be dry cleaning or clothes. The next is don't compare yourself to others. And that may seem like I'm contradicting what I said in the tip number three, but that's not what I'm saying here. Getting inspired and comparing yourself to others and feeling lesser about yourself are completely different things. When we spend too much time on those apps, we might start comparing ourselves to others. Um, my body is not good enough. My wardrobe is not good enough. We start having this kind of ideas. This is not a good place to be. Give yourself a break from this app from time to time. Get a detox. We all harbor these secret dreams we'd like to look like a fantasy self when we idealize to be. It's really tempting not to lust when we are scrolling all these photos and seeing these wonderful women dressed in impeccably in wonderful styles that we all know that they are models that are there for a reason. They are there to sell and merely to sell. And I'm not judging anybody, they are doing their work. We have to detach from that because that's not our reality. And when we do that, we perhaps start accepting us the way we are at a given point in time. And we start shopping for what makes us feel great. As individuals with our peculiarities, we, we are unique. We have differences. And I spoke with lots of psychologists when I was writing my book. In their theory is that the first images and visuals of style that spark lust in us, just as our own interest in style blooms, create this dream style of ourselves that's so hard to let go of. So for example, you love the idea of the low-rise pants that are back now. But you know that you will make you appear larger and you make your legs appear shorter. So you have to set sail on those dreams and perhaps realize that low-rise pants aren't for you and find ways that will kind of be similar, have the same effect, but that won't compromise on the way you look. For example, try something mid-rise and you'll make you appear current, but you won't make you look shorter than you are. So that's always a way that you can adjust something to your specifics. That's a way of bringing the power back to you and not just being dictated and thrown from side to side like um, a tennis ball. And the next tip is affirmations. And affirmations are so in vogue at the moment and they are used in so many aspects from business to career to relationships. So why not use in style? 
According to Wikipedia, the definition of affirmation is carefully formatted statement that should be repeated to oneself and or written down frequently. For affirmations to be effective, they need to be present tense, positive, personal, and specific. I'm a true believer that words have strong power in impressing in our subconscious mind and what we think become a reality. So use something along these lines. I love my wardrobe and I carry it with confidence or I love how I look in my clothes every day. Even if you don't believe that, it's the fake until you make aspect of that that really works. With repetition, you start believing that and it becomes your reality. The next tip, you have too many options. And I've said that in other videos that when we have a lot of options to choose from, that can lead to something that is called decision fatigue. When you go out shopping and you don't have a plan, it means that you don't know your style, you don't want to wear, you are not giving it direction. If you're not giving it direction, you won't go anywhere. You end up buying everything or not buying anything at all. If you have a lot of clothes, you have to eliminate the excess. So go ahead and eliminate everything that is not working, you haven't worn, that you don't like, that it's not in a good condition. This have to go. Think about the people that will benefit from it or the space that you're gonna create in your wardrobe, the energy is gonna start flowing again because Everything that is stuck is energy stuck. We don't want energy stuck in our wardrobe or anywhere in our lives. So once you've done that, chances are you need a piece or two. But I would say something that will really have absolutely everything to do with your new woman, the one you want to be, and give it direction. You are in command. You're just not aware of it for the most part. And if you are on the other end and you have no options, chances are that at the bare minimums you have basics. That's a great place to be. Mindset is really everything. And lastly, we are human beings. We like some bling, something that uses luxury. It doesn't need to be anything expensive. Something that feels special. So plan for that, check your budget. Have your lifestyle in mind. Don't go get a pair of sky-high heels when you don't wear heels at all. That's not what I'm saying. But something that will refresh your wardrobe, that will, that will symbolize the spark again with your wardrobe. You falling in love with your wardrobe once again. It's just use that as a symbol. I think that's pretty powerful not buying exactly the same things again, over and over again, or buying something that is completely different from everything you have and doesn't have to do with you whatsoever. I'm meaning something, something, a pair of earrings or a different belt, something that is small enough just to add the warmth, but that won't interfere with your style, with your current wardrobe. It would just be symbolic, or it could be an elevated basic if you are a basic person. Classic with a little twist, something that you see yourself wearing for years, but that has something to it. Be unapologetic about your style. If you like neutrals, if you like basics, wear them. And if you love statement pieces, go for it. So there you have it. This might be some of the reasons why you're stuck in a style rut or you don't like your closet. So I hope you shed some light on how you go about your wardrobe moving forward. It doesn't need to be anything too transformative. It just tweaks, little tweaks here and there. You don't need to buy an entire wardrobe. You don't need to get rid of all your wardrobe. Just get rid of the, what doesn't belong there, that's for sure. And think about the energy moving and think about how you want to direct your, your closet. Remember, you are in the pilot seat. Don't let anybody else drive you. Style is not about having elevated pieces in your wardrobe, statement pieces in your wardrobe, or wearing classic neutrals. Style is all about what makes you feel great, what suits your lifestyle, and obviously your budget. So thanks so much for watching, everyone. I really appreciate your time. Please let me know if you have some tips to share with us here. Have a great day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye everyone. <music>